of the deen have stated that the human being what he should do is that in his du'as in his prayers most uh, of all he should be careful about what that when he is doing du'a performing du'a that oh Allah he should recite this du'a oh Allah when I depart from this world, when I leave this world at that time, then take me in such a way, in such a condition, that on my body may there be zero trace of sins, zero marks of any sin. And we should do this dua in high quantity, in high abundance, in abundance. It seems very difficult. Now how can it be a person, a man, we're stuck in, a, in this dunya, in this world, in such a place that on every breath a human being... He is um, turning towards it and tending towards sin. And we do this. We do this. So for us to say that Allah, when I leave this world, that may there be zero trace or zero marks of any sin on my body, sounds hard, but it is not impossible. It is not impossible. The reason for this is, is this, that this is a dua. And this is prayer. And the meaning of prayer is to ask. And who are we, who are we asking from? From He... For, from he for, for whom nothing is impossible for Allah. Nothing. Nothing is impossible for Allah Ta'ala to implement. So this is a great assistance for us, isn't it? A great, great remedy for us. Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah. We're asking from Allah. And when we do dua, Allah Ta'ala says himself, that I hear your duas. I accept your duas. So here... With regards to this, why do we need to think in depth? Oh, it's too hard. How's this going to happen? How can I leave this world when I die and there's no sin to my name? How can this be? We, and how can it be that no mark of sin will be on my body or on my name or on my record? But Alhamdulillah, just like Allah has given us the ability to say this prayer, then Alhamdulillah, Allah can make it so that when we leave this world, you could get such great news. That you will leave pure and you will enjoy at that time of death in the hereafter, everything. Because all the problems in the hereafter are related to sins. All of the difficulties and darkness are due to sin. So if sins are removed, end the story. Isn't it? So this is a big, big encouragement for us. That man, what should he do? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we ask him, we should always keep requesting, requesting Allah Allah, please, when you take me from this world, may I be free from the sins. Take me out from this world that there's no mark of any sin on me, on my body, physically, spiritually. Whether it's a big sin or small sin, whatever. When you say, oh, this is a small sin, don't worry, nothing will happen. But we'll realize at that time when, may Allah forgive, may Allah forgive, may Allah ta'ala be merciful to us, but when the adhab is shown, then there will be no big small sin at that time, the adhab of the so-called small sin will be so large, we cannot imagine. Have you not seen in various hadith, the sins that we consider minor, the splashes of urine, the splashes of urine, but what a big punishment is recorded in the hadith, this is not a small sin. And according to the punishment, then how can a sin be small? If an action attracts punishment, how can the action be small? So what we should do is that alhamdulillah, a great assistance Allah has given us, great assistance and a great means. Let's do dua, ask Allah, request from Allah. Allah be merciful that from top to bottom, our every hair on our body, if it's uh, rubbed in sin, but even it could be that before death, a few seconds before, we could do such an amal, an action that all the sins could be wiped away. Yes. This can happen. So never think, a man should never think, no, I can't do this. The biggest point is that we are asking from Allah, that's it. If we get the tawfiq to ask, Allah take me from the world so that there are no sins to my name. It's not impossible. Everything's possible. I'll tell you this, there's such deeds 
A person, when he does those deeds, he doesn't know about his sins. Rather, all the sins are transformed into good deeds. Look here today, this majlis, this gathering, I speak about myself. How many sins I must have to my name until now? Oh, unlimited. Angels are probably tired of writing about my sins. They're probably tired, exhausted. But Allah's mercy upon mercy, that after every dua, after every salah, we have this habit that Allah Ta'ala, that please wash the sins, wash the sins, wipe away the sins, wipe away the sins, eliminate the sins, eliminate the sins. Make my sheet clear. Make my sheet clean, Allah. Wipe away my sins. Not that we've committed sins. What's the point of doing dua? No, don't think like this. This is not the status of a mu'min because our connection, relationship is with Allah. With Allah, Rabb, the, the Lord, the Creator, we don't need to complain or doubt. No, the mu'min should just keep asking, keep asking, keep requesting, keep requesting. So Allah Ta'ala, look, Allah Ta'ala has created millions and billions of people and He has sat us and said, I've forgiven you and I've given you Jannah as well. Due to this gathering. And this is the reward for this amal that Allah is making us do right now. That's why Allah drags us here, pulls us here, invites us here, forces us from far, near and far. Allah has brought us here, hasn't He? Then when we start walking, then we look back. Oh, shall I stay at home? Oh, shall I go? Oh, it's too hard. I feel sleepy. Then Allah pushes us, pushes us, pushes us and seats us down and says, Go, I've forgiven you. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So we don't follow our desires and our uh, feelings and emotions. Shaitan's in our emotions. No, yaar, I can't stay now. I've prayed salah. Well, let's go home and sin a bit. But Allah Ta'ala then created a majlis, a gathering. Allah Ta'ala created this gathering. Allah Ta'ala says that I want to bring you into the shade and the ocean of my rahmah mercy. So Allah Ta'ala took us from our beds, mattresses, from work. We're feeling sleepy. Allah likes these actions. That Allah's forgiveness is unique. Don't look at your sins. Don't look at the darkness of your sins. Rather, look at Allah's mercy. Keep on asking from Allah. Keep on asking from Allah. Don't get tired. Don't get tired of asking. And Allah will create such means and methods that the insan, he escapes. Or he passes the test, you can say. Passes the test. Now, don't look towards the sins. The sins, in reality, what's the reason? Why do we sin? Why? When we realize what the sin is, the root cause of a problem, then we get the cure. If you don't get the root cause, the reason you can't cure it. For example, you see some people are cancer, doing cancer research, and uh, this germs and virus and bacteria, people are researching about illnesses, so that when we learn about the illness, we can get the cure. If we don't see the reason behind the illness, how are we going to find out the cure? So if we realize today, the background, that why do we sin? That why do we displease our Rabbi, our Creator? What a waste of space I am. Yes? That why do I make my Lord create unhappy by committing sins, by disobeying Him? What's the reason? So we should look at the reason under the microscope, isn't it? So that when we learn the reason why we sin, we can grab hold of the solution. End of, end of story. Alhamdulillah. Then there will be good deeds upon good deeds and enjoyment beyond enjoyment. So take hold of the reason for a problem. So you can fix the problem. It's not a big storm. A hurricane, sin. It's not hard. If we realize the reason, then the sin will float away like thin air. It's nothing. It's nothing. Doesn't matter how many attractions, our eyes, mouths, tongues, our hands, our feet, our body. All sins are being committed by these organs. But Alhamdulillah, if we realize the reason behind sin, we cure it, then all the doors to sin will be slammed shut. So we should know the reason. Why do we sin? Why do I commit sins? Why do I do wrong? My hands, feet, my tongue, my eyes. Why do they come out of control? Yes, if we see the eyes sinning, the mouth is saying something wrong, the hands that should be eating, they're doing wrong, they're using, uh, holding the food, the feet and the eyes and the body, they're full of sins. We're praying Salah, we're sinning, we're reading Quran, we're sinning. Uh, fasting Ramadan was sinning. Yaar, what's going on here? Why are we doing this? The reason is that we don't go towards the root cause of our sins, the diagnosis of our sins. What is the, the underlying factor behind the sins? There's one reason that I'd like to explain to you. There are ten reasons maybe. But one reason today, if we realize this, then will you implement the cure brothers? True promise? Sincere promise? That's why we sat here, isn't it? Isn't it? End of story. Then Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, we will be successful. Then we won't commit sins. If we don't commit sins, enjoyment, enjoyment. So light the man becomes. Look, when a person commits a sin, then the heaviness comes onto him. When he's sleeping, he's feeling heavy, his thoughts are heavy, he's regretting, somebody slapped him. Okay, you maybe you slapped someone out of anger, but then you'll regret, oh, I shouldn't have hit him. Oh, I made a mistake. Oh, I shouldn't have said this to him. And your heart will keep on pestering you, pestering you. If you've done dhulm on someone, oppressed someone, 
committed excess against somebody and that person was weak, that poor woman, she was weak, then he starts thinking inside. If you interview that person, who are people who have killed others? Yes, if you go to them in the jail and interview the murderer, did you kill? No, no, I regret what I did, I did wrong, I shouldn't have done it. After sinning, a person regrets inside. This is another adab. Another punishment after sinning, doing wrong to regret. Then there's another other punishment that comes from the human being. But when the human being gets stubborn after sinning, he forgets to regret. This is a bigger punishment. What's the reason behind this? That we sin today, if we realize the reason, then we can cure the reason. Allah has explained the reason for sinning. Allah says, that, that Allah says the qulubum, the, the heart, that all the sins we commit from the small to the big tongue, eyes, dhulam, oppression, lying, fraud, all of the sins we know, you name them, name the sin, collect them, gather them, all sins are done for one reason, there's one reason behind sinning, one reason and all sins are committed due to that reason, what is that? Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ Allah says, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ, the heart becomes hard, like a rock, what's the reason? The heart becomes hard like a rock. When a person's heart becomes hard like a rock, then he starts to commit the sins. He starts to commit the sins. Allah told us in the Quran, ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُبُهُمْ Their hearts become solid like a rock. Just like a rock. Then Allah says, that forget about the, uh, the, the, the rock, forget about the, the heart being like a rock. They're harder than rock. Because even a rock you can break it and maybe moisture will come out of that. But a person's heart becomes even harder than that, Allah says. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, this is the hardness of the heart. A person becomes so stubborn, so stubborn and so firm on the sense that despite knowing all the signs of sinning, he says, I don't believe in Allah. Despite having all the signs in the universe about Allah, he says, I don't believe in Allah. What's the reason? Allah says that the, the hearts have become hard. The hearts have become hard. And when a person's heart becomes hard, even if he's doing so much wrong, he doesn't realize he's doing wrong. You see that today, uh, in this generation, so much dhullam is being exercised, implemented. We believe in Allah, we read the Quran, we do ibadah, we worship. But we do dhulam, we oppress in our homes, with our women, with our children. Dhulam, extreme dhulam. Ajeeb scene today in the alam that suddenly a person, human being, becomes like an animal. He starts to speak nonsense from his mouth. He doesn't know who is this, who is this, this is not who I'm speaking to. He doesn't realize. And he takes revenge out on somebody and he gets to the extreme of murder and planning and plotting that let me wipe away this human being. Finish this person off. This is not a human being, rather he's an animal. Rather animals don't even do this in reality. The human being, he came from uns, from the word love. Allah gave the name for the insan, the human being. The difference between the human being and the animals is uns, love. Allah has given us awareness, consciousness, love, regard, respect. But our hearts have become so hard, so solid like rocks. My brothers, whenever a person comes into the form of an animal, into the qualities of an animal, he disobeys Allah a bit, straight away he should analyze. There's one reason for this, that my heart is spoilt at this moment in time. My heart is contaminated. Man thinks, no, 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 it's not this reason. I did this for this reason. He justifies. He said this to me, so I said this to him. He said this to me, I did this to him. He took my rice, I did this to him. She used to say this to me, he used to say this to me. And this is the game. This is the trick that we fall into. We shouldn't look for excuses. Don't seek to justify your sins. When we justify the sins, I'm revenge, I'm seeking revenge, I'm doing this for this reason. This is all for the fact that our hearts are hard. Our hearts have become rock stones. We can't see the stones and the rocks in our, in our hearts. As I said, we do ibadah, we worship. But like, just like when a person, he does ibadah, worships, but all the water is poured, cold water is poured over them because our hearts are like rock. Oh, I'm going to hit him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to take revenge. For example, somebody says, let me pray two rakah quickly, quickly. So then I'll see you after that. Let me pray two rakah nafal. Then after that, I'll, I'm going to murder you. This is a statement, isn't it? People have made the same. In reality, they do. They say, let me just do two nafal. Then I'm going to do this against you. Do Have patience two minutes. After that, I'm going to come for you. I'm going to give you pain. Allah says, thumma qasad. So after today, from today, we should make a formula really habitual in our life. That a person, when he's committing a sin or doing wrong, only that time he will do this when his heart is hard, like a rock. 
Allah says, And yet after all this your hearts hardened and became like rocks. Allah says that that person who's worse than that goes beyond the, the quality of a rock. He is totally lost any realization of sin that he's disobeying Allah. He has no differentiation between small and big. I told you there's no differentiation between small and big. That we'll realize what a so-called small sin is when we go to the qabr, the grave. And when the adab will come, that sin we consider as a minor. When the adab will come, how will we be saved then? Today we have time. Today we have time. So we need to practice one thing today. That this hard heart that we commit sins with our hands and feet and our eyes and our organs and our limbs, wherever we're sinning from, where they're coming from, whatever we're sinning from, where do they come from? From the hardness of the heart. And the more a person's heart is soft, because the quality of a mu'min is what? When his heart is softened, when it becomes soft and tender, then the human becomes so soft, so tender, so soft. There are events of the walis, the pious predecessors, that forget about insan, the human being. There's a wali Allah, a pious elder, that it was extremely cold at that time. Extremely cold. When he came inside, he saw there was a cat, there was a cat, an animal on his bed. And he was lying down that the, the blankets, everything were underneath the cat. He stopped. He said, and this is the softness and the hardness of the heart. You realize at that time. He said, Allah, this is the creation of Allah. I won't remove him from here, from the comfort. He's speaking about the cat. If our child is there, we pull him from the leg. Get off my bed. Don't you know I want to sleep? I've got to go to work in the morning. Disrespectful. Disrespect we are. We go home to our bedroom or somebody's resting. Somebody's lying down resting. We knock on the door. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, you haven't made me tea. We, have, we tell to the women folk at the home. What have you done? I'm late. You haven't made me tea. We call someone, the poor soul, mother, somebody, female. What's going on? When we go to home, we'll knock on the door loudly. Because we are Chaudhrys. We're the big shots of the house. Everyone else is a minor. This is our haka, right? We can go home as we want. We say, it's only a child sleeping in it. No, no, don't think like this. The child, remember that all awareness and consciousness is present there on the child. And the child sees everything transparently. Then he becomes the enemy of the father. And he thinks, the father thinks, why is my son against me? Why is he my enemy? Why is he going against me? Because he's seen everything transparent, just like my father used to treat me, thinking I was a child. Today those qualities have come into me. Then he starts to disrespect his father. He's an enemy of his father. He hits him or he fights with him, quarrels with him. He remembers the story of his young life. He'll never forget it. Never. That you shouldn't continue your mind. That don't you remember when you were a child and what happened when you were young? Maybe somebody hit you or pained you, and then you will have nightmares about that for years. This happened to me. That happened to me, etc. Does it happen or not, twin son? Of course it does. So he came, and so Manallah, the the animals, the makhluk of Allah. So when the pious person, even he sees. The animal going through something, he will step back. Uh, he trembled all night long in the night in the cold, but he did not remove that cat from his bed so that he could use the bed sheets or the quilt, etc. That he was a human being. Was this some requirement of the Sharia? Was this an order of Allah? Or was Allah Ta'ala going to be displeased with him if he didn't do this? No. But he was so soft and tender in the heart that he had so much love for the creation of Allah. He said, let the cat sleep and I'll just sit nearby the bed. So if was he not to become a wali of Allah after that? Of course. So if the softness comes into our hearts, then we will see the result. And there was another great muhaddith, scholar of the hadith, I can't remember his name. And when he is presented in the court of Allah, he was a muhaddith. He had written hadith, recorded hadith, and... He, he was somebody, a student of his, saw him in the dream. Hazrat, were you forgiven? He said, yes, I was forgiven. And mashallah, he had a high maqam. He said, my, my forgiveness did occur. But do you know why? Uh, he said, Hazrat, what was your deed? For which, which hadith you recorded? Which event? Which ibadah? Which worship? Which prostration did Allah forgive you? He said, Allah called me and said that such a time, in such a place, put all your hadith to the side, all your knowledge to the side. Wrap it all up and put it aside. Do you know why I'm forgiving you? Do you know why I'm letting you off? He said, Allah, please tell me. He said, Allah said that once you were writing from the pen, and you know the ink from the pen, the ink pens, fountain pens, when you were writing and you had made a fountain pen and the ink that was on your pen, and you have see this in our countries and in some country, then a, a fly came and sat. When the fly sat next to your pen, you stopped writing with your pen. SubhanAllah. This is the sign of the soft heart. And the fly was sitting there, the insect, and you stopped writing and you wanted the... The, the fly to drink your ink so it could quench its thirst. When you gave this liquid to the fly to quench its thirst, Allah says, then I quenched the fire of Jahannam that was destined for you. Allahu Akbar. So have we got a chance or not, brothers, today? 
Though we don't look at ourselves, we make excuses. Why did you do this sin? I did this sin for this reason, this happened to me. Why are you doing this? I did this for this reason, because he said this to me, so I said this to him. I wanted to take revenge on him. He said this is shirk, so I should do this and that. Sharia, that all the, the, the permission for revenge in Sharia is for what reason? The biggest reason is forgive that person. This is the biggest revenge that we can take on a person. Forgive that person. Forgive that person. Forgive that person. Today, you can do this, you can do this, but eventually, ultimately, it's better if you forgive that person, subhanAllah. And the more your heart is soft, the person should soften his heart. Soften his heart. Make it soft and tender. Al-Ladina, either, ذَكَرُوا وَجْلَتْ قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah Ta'ala says in the Qur'an. Look at this verse in the Qur'an. That when a person does the dhikr of Allah, remembers Allah, then their hearts become what? Suddenly they start to become fearful of Allah due to khawf. That me and you, we've got tasbih, doing dhikr, we go to the wali Allah, he gave us instructions. This is not a drama, brothers. This is not some jamaat or sect or cult. This is the rahmah of Allah. Allah's fadl, his mercy, his grace, his blessings. This is what it is. Fadl and rahmat of Allah. That such a precious time of my life, subhanAllah, that from millions of lives in comparison, that few seconds were more precious. One moment in the company of the wali of Allah is greater than hundreds of thousands of lives. Put hundreds of thousands of lives to the side. Money, wealth, fame, pomp, glory. And on the other side, put that one moment when I sat in front of Hazrat Sahib, my sheikh, and I did tawbah, repented. Nothing can compare to this. Nothing can compare to this. That my every atom of my body cannot be grateful that Mawla, I'm so grateful to you. That everything you give to one side, my ibadah, worship, hajj, umrah, everything I've done, I had it. I've done it, but no taste, and full of sins, full of swears and bulum, oppression, injustice. My deeds were like this, full of tricks and games and trying to be smart and clever. All our ibadah is full of this. Takabbur, pride, and um, non akhlaq no manners, no good behavior, money, wealth. All of these things are inherent within our deeds. But these are such big negative factors. Allah Ta'ala gives the punishments for these. Allah says this punishments are upon you. Why? Because you didn't read my Quran, you didn't understand it. That Allah Ta'ala, how and where does He accept the amal of a person? How does He make a human being His mahboob? This is your heart. If your heart is soft, then Allah says, then I'll make you my beloved, my mahboob. And Allah's great mercy on us. Allah says, my massive mercy is upon you. That for your islah, for your rectification, improvement, refinement. I've made a big decision for your Islam so that you can be corrected, so that your deeds become accepted, so I can accept your salah, so I can accept your Ramadan, so I can accept your recitation. One is doing, one is Allah accepting. Remember this point. One is doing, 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 doing. One is Allah accepting, accepting, accepting. So to which direction should we go? Not doing, but rather acceptance. Allah accept my deeds. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمْيُ الْعَلِيمُ Who is saying this? Allah is telling us. As Ibrahim a.s. made this dua. He, he recited this dua. He said, Allah, you made me do this deed. But what do I know? Is there pride in this? Was there any intoxication in this? Was there sincerity in this? What do I know? That what was in my salah? How do I know what I did in my recitation? How do I know that these actions that I carried out that I've attained? What was I, what was I not? I don't know anything. Allah, I know one thing. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samul alim. Allah, this is all I know. This is all I know. I have no deeds. I have nothing that can be accepted. Allah, please accept whatever you're making me do. Whatever I'm doing, Allah, accept, please accept. And this is called acceptance. Allah replies immediately that I give you such a big favor, such mercy for this reason that I want to take you to the level of acceptance so I can accept your deeds. And I've said this, Allah Ta'ala says. I've said this, that you're not capable of this. How dare you think you're capable of doing these that will be accepted? How dare you think that you can do my dhikr? Allah, such a pure name. Allah's great pure name. Allah, and you are sitting down and remembering me, Allah says, doing my dhikr and you can recite my name. This is my karam and fadl, blessings, mercy, grace, that I can give you the opportunity to remember my name so I can purify you in parallel. Subhanallah. So whenever we sit down to do dhikr, don't think it's you doing it. Be so extremely grateful that Allah, you're so graceful, so 
merciful. Not that I don't feel like it, I don't want to do tasbih, I don't feel like doing this. We should be millions of times grateful. Whether we feel like it or not, whether my habits feel like it or not, whether my emotions feel like it or not, whether shaitan puts me off or not. But say Allah, I'm so grateful that you've given me the tawfiq to recite your name. We should drown into the name of Allah, into the ocean of Allah's name. If a person, for example, the halak of dhikr, the gathering of dhikr, this is full of sincerity, humbleness. And the person, the host who's hosting the gathering, he's rubbed his name in the soil. And the people who are sitting in the gathering should rub their name in the dust. We should be so high on the maqam of shukr, gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have cured me with your name and you are making my heart soft. My heart is hard like a rock. Apart from shahwat and lust, there was nothing in my heart. And this is the reality, the truth. You do dhikr, I do dhikr. MashaAllah, you do dhikr, I just copy you. Alhamdulillah. Allah's massive mercy upon us. Try this. 40 days mutawatir dhikr. If you do dhikr continuously, I swear by Allah, your life will change and improve. And we cannot change our lives from thousands of promises or speeches or waz or lectures or hajj, umrah. This is my personal experience in life. My personal experience. In no way can we improve our inner self. Zahir will change. Aji sahab, fala sahab, his face, you become um, bareheaded, you drink zamzam, you do umrah. But only physically, spiritually, emotionally can we change when we do the right action. What is that one right action? Alladina dhakar Allah. Wajilat kulubuhum ala talasas. At that time when you do the dhikr of Allah, when you remember me, what does it affect? Not the eyes, not the ears. Allah is mentioning, not your hands. What is affected? What is affected? The heart starts to fear. Who? Not scorpions and insects and the dunya or hunger or poverty or nakedness or whatever. Not from human beings. Who does it start to become afraid of? His Rabb, his Lord. Yara took his money. What will Allah say? I have a chance. Oh... Put the, uh, uh, transfer the assets over to your name. Oh, there's a chance. Take the dowry of that woman. Nobody will ask. Oh, take the shares of people's assets. Oh, take, the father will take the sister, uh, the, the mothers and the mother will take the fathers and the children, whatever. Who's scared? Who's afraid? Who's afraid from the judge or jail or justice or the court? No one. The thief is sat in front of you. Master, the whole country devout. Is he scared? Is he afraid? No. He's not afraid. Nothing. No khawf. No fear. He says, I'm totally fine. I'm totally clear. So this is due to the rocks. Allah has given an example in the Quran that the hearts are harder than rocks. Further, harder than rocks. Even water comes out of the rocks. But how can water come out of those kulubs after taking all the money of the world? He says, I'm honest. Everyone's talking rubbish. I'm honest. The ajeeb examples of the dunya, weird examples. How can we be satisfied? That let's speak about ourselves. Speak about speaking about other people. Let's speak about ourselves today. This night. My heart, is it like this? Your heart, is it like this? Are we in a bad position? That we aren't merciful on anyone? The right is this. That if we have to give 10 to someone, then give 15 to that person. If you have to give someone slap to you, if you slap somebody once, then slap yourself 70 times. How did I do this? Young, old, tall, short, poor, uh, and wealthy, don't differentiate. Don't differentiate. Wajalat kulubim. Allah says, your heart should be afraid. That what will my Rabb say to me? That how will I present myself in His court when this connection is made with a human being? That we leave being afraid of human beings, and we start to become afraid of our Rabb, then tell me that human being is made at that time. Then he's made. Insan, why are we afraid of human beings? Why? We should be afraid of Allah. So when will this occur? And what tariqah Allah give to us? Method, alladheena dhakarullah. Those people who remember Allah, who start to remember Allah, that's it. That's it. So soft becomes the rock that 10 people, 100 people is murdered. 14, 15 people, they've murdered. In our countries we see people, they've murdered 14, 15 men and women. They've shot them, they sat down, free, big-headed. He says, oh, I'll do what I want. Imagine. Imagine. What is the hukum? When the heart becomes soft, then don't even pain or give difficulty or distress to a cat. That's the human being. What's the difference between the two? That his, the first person, his heart was hard like a rock. When it became soft, so soft that every creature Allah made, even the fly, he starts to love. The fly. And the basis of Allah's forgiveness has changed now. He says, Allah, Allah says, I don't need your ibadah. Put them to the side. The biggest ibadah, the biggest worship action. Well, here's the statement coming. Allah says, the biggest ibadah, the biggest act of worship, if somebody gets in his life, destiny is what? 
is that any creature of Allah to love the creatures of Allah, to love the creation of Allah. This is the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That Allah, this is the dua has been taught to us. Allah, forgive my sins, accept my tawbah repentance, and Allah give me the love for the poor people. Give me love for the poor people. When I read this dua, I started to cry, Allah subhanallah. What a great dua Allah's Nabi Sallallahu taught us. The whole path to paradise is being prescribed to us. Allah give me love to the poor people, for the poor people. No money, not wealth was asked. What do we ask for? The Allah, that your makhluk creation, who you've kept in the world for this reason, subhanAllah. You've created them for this reason, the poor people. And so that you want to take people into paradise due to the poor people. The people love the poor people, and you send them into paradise. So for example, maybe we can do this deed, and they can't do this deed. So the heart should become so soft that when you're going somewhere, somebody's eating, or you're eating, you should stop. I'm eating, he's not eating anything. Your heart should feel like this, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Yes? If you see enjoyment, see on Hajj and Umrah, that how our hearts are soft. Are they soft? We realize straight away. That we don't let anyone else sleep. We say, it's my bed, my mattress. How dare you come to my bed, mattress? And Allahu Akbar. That, for example, that this is my seat on this transportation. I booked it first. People are saying this. They don't worry, leave it. What difference does it make? No, no, no. There are two seats there. He's got two seats booked and he sits there wide. He's got enough room for two people to sit. He doesn't let, want, uh, want to let anyone else sit. And he's going where? To do tawaf. Labayka lahumma labayk. Labayka la sharika laka labayk. Inna alhamda. Walhamda. Inna alhamda. Inna alhamda. Walna'imata. Allah Ta'ala says he does this dua. And all of these tests, Allah Ta'ala says, are on that journey. Yeah? The big scenes we see on that journey. Yes? And it's a, the greatest place for us, the greatest place to go at the time of Hajj or Umrah when a person can measure his deeds. You'll see poor people, such poor people that when he stood there and he sees people drinking tea, he was an old person, I saw him. And I said, Abba, you're not drinking tea. He said, son, I saw this, that in Pakistan it costs this much. According to Pakistan, it's 10 rupees, this cup of tea. I started to cry. That Allah... That your beloved servant, you've sent him to your home. You've done everything. But so many people, Alhamdulillah, you've sent it. But you're going to allow people to earn Jannah through this action. They will get to Jannah if they serve these people. Obviously, and you're sitting in front of him drinking tea. And the old man, he hadn't drank tea for some days. And he felt like drinking tea. And you're putting money, your hand into your pockets. You've got dollars and pounds. Oh, immodest people, at least ask that person who doesn't drink the tea. Does he want some? Yes, how Allah Ta'ala has prepared for you the roots. It's not that you can't give to him, you can't serve him. And when you give him tea or taking home, and you give him the same food that you're eating, there is one dua that will come out. One dua. I remember there was a person, and he was blind, the poor soul. And people wouldn't give him the time of day, and he couldn't see anything. And I saw him, and he was quite heavy, he was blind. I went to him, Assalamu salam alaykum, greeted him, then I went. I said, uh, what do you want? He said, uh, I want to do ziyara at the Rose of Mubarak. I want to see. Tell me. I said, you come with me. And it was time of hajj. It's not this, I'm a good man. I'm trying to show off. No, no, I'm just giving you an example. May Allah have mercy on us. A person like me, the worst person in the world, that I'm so... Uh, but Allah Ta'ala, if He wants to give His mercy to someone, I'm just giving the difference that when a person's heart is soft, then he, when he thinks like this, then Allah's mercy comes to him. So I said, uh, let me show you. I showed him, uh, took him there and he, he, he recited salam at the roda. And he said, where's the ghumbad? I said, this way. He said, this side. I said, get to this side. Then he raised his hands. And the first dua he recited was the dua that I needed. Say subhanallah. Subhanallah. That how did Allah Ta'ala make his heart so soft? I couldn't ask for that dua myself. I couldn't even think about it. He raised his hands and said, Allah, give to this man. Give to this man. He said in such a way. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah, when I came back, I had already attained what he had asked for. Subhanallah. So this is what? That the broken hearts, if we tend to them, serve them. I'm telling you the virtues of dhikr here. That when we go to a human being, and it's not this that you do from ten tasbees. No, look at yourselves. Until now, that has the soft heartedness come to us. If I've still got anger so much inside me, my defects, my sins, I should keep on analyzing. When I see there's a defect, straight away start to do more dhikr. Only one action will make the heart soft. What is that? Dhikr Allah. That's why we do the dhikr of Allah. We don't do it. Rather Allah makes us do it. Allahu Akbar. Allah makes us do it. And who can dare to sit down one hour, two hours, three hours? Remember Allah, morning, evening, we fail. As we go along, it's too hard, I've got to do this. I'm in the well, I've got to do these actions. I've seen people 
That when you tell someone start to do dhikr, oh, I can't do this much, I've got so much work to do. When did I tell you to work so much? They just do a little bit. When you see them, when the love for dhikr comes, and alhamdulillah, the same person leaves all his work and duties, he's sitting down first doing dhikr of Allah. And his sleep goes away, because Allah says that, that person becomes grateful. He starts to enjoy. And this is tawfiq Allah. Allah's karam, Allah's fadl, Allah's rahma, Allah's mercy, Allah's rahmas. And this is when a person attains Allah's bounty. May Allah Ta'ala allow these thoughts to descend onto our brains and minds. What do we need to do? Correct our hearts. And we have got the sign of the good hearts. Look around you. That we are so disrespectful. And the whole picture will come in front of us. Don't make excuses. Oh, this is the reason why I sinned and that. No, straight away. Let's be honest. Say your heart. Why am I talking nonsense rubbish? Why? My heart is hard. That's why I enjoy sinning. There's no other reason. There's no other reason. That's why I commit sins. Otherwise in Islam, if somebody hits, forgive that person. If he does dhulam to you, forgive him. If he oppresses, forgive him. Don't look at his DVX, I'll do this to him for this reason, he did this to me, I'm going to do this to him. You fail, you fail. Fail beyond fail. Your dhikr is not complete. My Hazrat Sahib used to say that your zikr is not enough. Increase your dhikr if you've got these defects. Hazrat Sahib said this, do more dhikr. Do more dhikr, you haven't succeeded yet. That the effects of sins are upon you. That have the effects of dhikr come upon you? Have they? That what are the effects of dhikr? Now you become a wali, you fly in the air, kash dreams, I did dua, this much happened, I became this, a wali Allah. These are not the effects of dhikr, the effects of dhikr are this, subhanallah. What are they? That don't eat yourself, give the chapati to other people. This is dhikr of Allah. This is how the effects of dhikr of Allah. So when these effects come to us, alhamdulillah, then praising others, loving others, taking others in front of you, putting them in front of you, thinking better for others. And if the other person is doing bad against you, even if he's your biggest enemy, don't look at his deeds or actions, he's my enemy. No. Allah Akbar, what do we need to look at? Allah, we look at Allah, Allah's fears in our heart, that no, Allah will ask me, what answer will I give? Well, I shouldn't do such things to that person. Will we do this, brothers? Inshallah, what thing should we do? What? What will we do? Say it loudly. What do we need to do? Uh, I can't hear you. Say it loudly. Dhikr Allah. Why are you saying it? Why are you afraid? What do we need to do? Dhikr Allah. It's still not enough. Not that we sit every morning and evening. Show me the effects. Is this why this is why we made the sheet system, the Tazki system, not to be a punishment for you, to dishonor you, disrespect you. We've made the sheet system so we can continue to judge ourselves, analyze ourselves. The hajj tick 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 and this 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 is and when the sins box comes we, we are deflated a balloon. When we lie, we, we deflate ourselves with regards to sins, we need to tighten the scale, the weight scale, calibrate it. Ooh, and if there's a doubt if you sin, then put a cross there. No, I've got a doubt. No, no, yes, yes, I didn't sin. No, I've doubted. Did I backbite it? No, I've crossed it. Cross it. Put the cross, even if you're under doubt, put the cross. Don't make your heart happy. But rather make your heart happy that I need to work harder. Allah has told you the tariqah, giving you the method, giving you dhikr, giving you a shaykh, giving you the majalis, the gatherings, giving you everything. So who will work hard? The angels? Will they come to make you work hard? Why do you commit sins? Tell me. Why? Why are you committing wrong? What's the answer? What is the answer that will come? That my heart is hard. The Quran has told us why are we sinning? Because our hearts, our heart like rocks. Why am I taking revenge on this person? Because my heart is hard. Why do I, don't I forgive this person? My heart is hard. Straightforward. So when the heart is hard, what happens? Will I go into paradise with a heart that is hard? Will I be saved? Will I be forgiven? No way. Only that person can be forgiven who will come to Allah with qalbi and salim. So today start preparing brothers. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Do you all make intention? All that we will not leave dhikr ever. We will do dhikr a kathir and kathir. We will keep on running to dhikr as long as that feeling does not develop inside us so that we are including in the list of the human beings. Wa akhru dawana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sallim 
ಸಂತು ಸ್ಲೀಮ ಸೀನ <laughs> ಅಂತ ಮೌಲಾನ ಬಂಸುಂದಿ بہت ہی مخلص بہت ہی عمدہ انسان تھے اکثر ان سے ملاقات رہتی تھی اللہ کو پیارے ہوئے منتظر ہوں گے کہ ہماری طرف سے کچھ ہدیہ جائے آج کے ساری مجلس کا سباب ان کی نظر کرتے ہیں اللہ پاک ان کے گناہوں کو بخشے ان کے اعتراجات کو بلند فرمائے ان کی قبر کو تحد نظر میں مولا جنت کی کیاری بنائے ہم تمام کی جتنی مضموم ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ آج کی رات ان سب کو بخشش فرمائے ಅಲ್ಲಹಮದುಲ್ಲಾಹಿ ರಬ್ಬಿಲ್ ಆಲಮೀನ್ ಓಂ